Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Safe Spaces Podcast, and today I'm joined by a good friend of mine, Omar. And uh, Omar, do you want to introduce yourself? Yes, I'm Omar Khalifa. Uh, I'm an English tour guide, Egyptologist tour guide, living in Luxor. And so Omar and I met around two years ago when I went to Egypt with a few of my buddies, and, and Omar did a great job. He actually... He was the lucky tour guide that got to come on the cruise with us and got to show us some really cool temples, uh, ac- like in s- not southern Egypt, but through like s- south from Cairo. So we started in Cairo, then we met up with Omar in, I think we met up in Luxor, right? Yes, Luxor to Aswan. We did uh, an island cruise where we started in Luxor and we done in Aswan. Yeah, and it was a great time, and Omar was a great guide, and, and we enjoyed getting to learn from him, and so I wanted to have him on to kind of talk to you guys about what he does, how he got into it, and a little bit about Egypt as a whole. So first, Omar, can you tell everyone what you do for a job? Um, I'm an English tour guide, and uh, this is my full job. Um, actually, what it made me interesting to study Egyptology, I, I was living, I am, I'm a, a local from Luxor, my like seven generations from there. So I, I was born there. Our old house, it was above the tomb. So I was very interested and very cur- curious to know the history of this tomb, how, why it's here, why it's there, what, what's behind all this. So I was very interesting about this. I was very curious to know during my childhood. So after high school, I went to Cairo. I'm studying four years, I can tell you, from 2004 until 2008. So I can tell you that mean we study the Egyptian history, the Egyptian writing, where it's hieroglyphic, all about the ancient Egypt. And then I um, started my job in 2009. I started to be a tour guide. So uh, for sure, I'm, I'm like a big guide in all of Egypt, but especially in Luxor and Aswan, and in Nile Cruise as well. Definitely. And so one thing you told me while I was over there that I found pretty interesting was that I, like being a tour guide is a very like desired profession for Egyptian youth. And so can you talk about like what else would you do other than being a tour guide if you needed to get a career in Egypt? Or would it would it be going to the like the United Arab Emirates or somewhere else? Like what do other careers in Egypt look like? The careers you talk about the tour guides or other careers? Other careers outside tour guides. Did you want to be anything other than a tour guide growing up? Actually not. I'm, I'm, I'm like my job so much. I, I'm like to meet new people, like different people all the time. I, I want to like see uh, or learn more about different cultures. So I like my job so much. And to be a tour guide here, you, you have to study about that because you have to get your license to be a tour guide. That means if from the high school, you need to study four years after high school. But if you already, you hide. You, you you already finished your your university. You can take a, just a, like a diploma for two years if you have high education already. But at anyway, you need to get your license to be a tour guide. And to be tour guide in India, you need to be this is like full job, full job uh, as a tour guide. Definitely full time job, Amy. And did you get is is the licensing process a part of? like the official education process, or is it something you do after you graduate from the, the school in Cairo? No, you, you, need, you, need, you need to, uh, like, form it up. No, just, no, the, the, the lenses not have any uh, relationship between that and the university. The lenses will get you the lenses that the, uh, the Ministry of the Tourism and Antiquity. So they're going to examine you what you study already. If you pass the exam, they give it to you Lenses for five years, and this is like uh, you need to uh, renew it each five years. This is licensing. And what is the licensing based off of mostly? Is it mostly like um, the history of of different tombs or the history of different um, like no, pyramids? No, this is the license to to be in to to can get all the the circle five. You can get in free. You you remember when we were together? I'm, I'm, I didn't get any tickets because they have lenses. So this is, you can go anywhere and you can buy contact with any tourist by this uh, lenses. What, what is the licensing test like though? Like what questions do they ask you? 
it's, it's like a kind of formative questions. For example, they're going to test you in some, they're going to explain one of the symbols. You're going to translate the part of hieroglyphic. You're going to, they're going to examine you in, in, in language because this is, each language you're going to decide which language you're going to be in tour guide. So they're going to examine you in the language you choose. Definitely. And so, do, like, it, can you speak fluently in, in hieroglyphs or is that something that's not possible? Is it just you can learn as much as you can about, like, the common hieroglyphs you'll see in the, in the temples? Man, man, you have to know that, that we say the hieroglyphic is a writing. We don't sure if it is with the language or not, you know, because what we can have, we can we can translate it, then translate it. We have two different meanings, like translation and translation. Translation, when we're going to translate the hieroglyphic to the Latin, then the Latin to English or Arabic, whatever. Definitely. So, I can, for, yeah, sure, sure I can. There is some um, text like Rabidid. Whereas we, we say Pian uh, Nefer God, uh, Nefer Nefer, that means the, the, the great God giving uh, the, the, the eternal life to the king. You know, there is like a affirmative, uh, repeated. Uh, take us like this, I'm easy, can, I can read them when just see them like English or Arabic. But there is like the old paragraph, you need to translate it, then you're going to figure out them and they give it you a meaning. Definitely. And so. I, I don't know. I'm curious. Do you have a favorite place that you get to take to people on tours? Because as someone that got to go, I obviously have like my favorite places we visited. But do you have any favorites? For, for, for myself, this is a very hard question to me because uh, I can't say each, each part has specific things. For example, when you go to the King's Valley, you can see the, the wonderful colors. You can see the reliefs very intact. When you go to Karnak, you can see a massive building. When you to, when you go to Abu Simbel, you're gonna to see as a as a very different um, facade to the temple. For myself, it's very hard to compare between each one to other, you know, because each one of them has specific things, you know. Definitely. So hardly to tell you which is my favorite. Yeah, definitely. I I personally like the Valley of the Kings just because I thought. It was so cool to see all those like burial sites, but pretty much everything in Egypt could be considered your favorite thing because you're not going to get to yeah. see things like that in the United States, at least like the amount of history attached to everywhere we went was uh, incredible, I would say. Yeah. And so while I was over there, it was, it was Ramadan and I just kind of want you to explain a little bit about what Ramadan entails for you and your family and how it works, because I don't think a lot of people in the United States understand it necessarily. And getting to see it firsthand was like a really cool experience for me. So I'd love for you to tell the listeners about what, what Ramadan is on a, on, I guess, a daily basis for you. Sure. So Ramadan is our holy month, our fasting month, because, you know, this is one of the, our, Five pillars. You know, the, the Islam has five pillars. Where is the witness? Where is we say, no God but Allah. Second one is the prayer. We, we pray five times a day. Then the third one is the fasting, which we do in Ramadan. So this is the third pillar on Islam. The fourth one is Sadaqah. Sadaqah, where you're going to pay uh, some, some money uh, for your money to the poor people. And the fifth one, Hajj where you would go to visit Mecca, like a pilgrimage. So, Ramadan is one year, uh, one, one, one month in a year. Uh, usually, we came like 13 days earlier each each year. This is the difference between the lunar and the solar year. Uh, we fasting, we started the fasting from the dawn, where it's just like a while before the sunrise until the sunset. So, from the sunrise to the sunset, where is no eat, no... Uh, no eat, no no drink, no anything get inside you. Uh, yeah, this is like a third. And this is for sure for just for the adults, that the children know, and the sick people know as well, and the pregnant ladies know, and just the, the ladies when they have a, a, like a baby, it's not as well. That means it's to affect your health. You, you, you wouldn't do that. You don't have to do. But for the healthy adult people, this is like have to. This is Ramadan. And so, 
what age do kids start uh, participating in Ramadan? Is it a specific age that... Uh... No, no, a specific age, like, like, could be, like, have to do from 15, 15 years, could be, you're going you're gonna to be have to do, but they got to practicing from, from area. For example, my eldest daughter, she is 11 now, and she's starting fasting. You know, but she, she hasn't too. But she doesn't by herself, like, the, her option. So, until when she gets 15 or 16 years, it's going to be easy for there, for her. If, yeah, much easier if they just started in 15 or uh, 16 years old. Definitely. And and one thing that it was hard for me when I was there, because I, I felt bad watching it, was, like, when we would be out at the temples, it would be 100 degrees, and, and you can't have any water or any food. And, like, I remember just me and my friends would, would watch you, and obviously it was amazing to see like how all was working through you and how you were like you were so embraced in the spiritual experience. But as a person that was drinking water, then it, it was hard to watch because like it obviously is hard to do. So can you talk about like what that sacrifice looks like when you're when you're still working as a tour guide and it's, it's Ramadan? No, 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 no. It's 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 not like not a big deal to see anyone he drank or he. he he drank or or someone he um uh, ate or something now because because we you know we, we do that like for like um as an order to allah we practicing that for allah we this is just something like interior something you know for example if if you if you go to some some place and you hide and you drink and you you eat no one you know you no one he's gonna to tell you anything but this is your option you know and this is like doing that for Allah, you know, so we, we feel like, we feel this is like supporting from Allah, you, you, you're right, when, when, if you're just thinking, oh, how you do that in like 110 degree or something, it's very, very, very hot, and you not drink water at all or like this, we sell, if logically this doesn't work, but when, when we took out like, like something like a healing or something meditation like we we, we do it that for allah we sure allah is gonna support us to do that that said man. no and it was it was a beautiful thing to watch from my perspective because there there isn't necessarily an equivalent um that happens in the united states whether it's christianity or what other re- religions are being practiced like there isn't a a i guess not national but a very big portion of the nation getting together for a cause to support Allah and let them work through their lives so it was it was a beautiful thing to see from like my perspective because I'd never seen anything like it in my life so, so, sorry sorry man I missed last thing can you repeat that oh yeah I I was saying it was a beautiful thing to see for me because there really isn't a United States equivalent to the season of Ramadan and and unless people are Muslim and and um and practice it but there aren't too many muslims in the united states so it was yeah. it was really cool to see for me and like i i forget if you were with us when we did this but we were out to dinner and the sun was going down and yeah. everyone from the streets was in the restaurant eating and it wasn't like they were being charged money it was just everyone was going to eat at sundown because that's what all wants them to do and it was really cool to see Right. So yeah. So uh, yeah. When when everyone he get like get have have food or break the break the break the break the fasting at the same time something cool. For example, usually, and for example, in the families, I have a very big family. In, in normal days, each one he he be in his own. He eat just with his kids. It's a small family, but in the Ramadan, we we we, we eat together like all the big family, like about. 25 people we eat together because because it's in the same time you know so it's it's kind of something like we feel it's more coherent you see each other a lot especially at night when you're gonna to practice things i i watch in in, in the news in uh, a new app and i think in uh, a new but it is, there is you have a very tabular square like tens or something like this i i watch the people they uh they're praying there. They're people. Definitely. Muslim, they mean. Yeah. And what is, what's, can you explain to our listeners the end of Ramadan? Like, I know there's a celebration. Can you go into a little bit about that? Oh, we 
for sure, we have the main uh, festival. We have two celebrations. The one after Ramadan, after 30 days, uh, after Ramadan, we have there's a big celebration. This is called the Eid. And also we have, after that, we have sacrificed Eid, where is another, uh, where the time for us for visiting Mecca, or Hajj, or the pilgrimage, uh, we got to sacrifice like a lamb or a cow or whatever. This is our two principal festivals. Yeah, definitely. And I... I assume that that's a very happy time for Egyptians and and like the sure. and do and you the see Muslims, not just Egyptian but for the, all, all the Muslims definitely yes. and do you see a lot of like extended family during that time period like will you go somewhere where you yes. know a lot of your family's located right right yeah you see all the family this time yeah. and so you you said you grew up in Luxor you were born and raised there and you said you were uh, from a long line of people from Luxor correct. Yes, correct. Was when you went to Cairo for university, was that the first time you went to Cairo or is that something that people from Luxor do a lot? No, no, I, I went before. I have some relatives, like far relatives, they they there. But I, I didn't stay longer as I was in, in university from two thousand four, two thousand eight. So my experience there you can see Luxor is a very quiet city as you saw. And not busy as Cairo. And Cairo is very busy. For for, for me as well, it's very busy. I didn't feel very comfortable in Cairo because, you know, it's busy, busy like, like a city city life, you know. But in Luxor, it's still more countryside, you know, it's still more quiet. Definitely. Yeah. And so the the biggest takeaway I had about how busy Cairo was was the traffic. Is there traffic like that in Luxor? Like the traffic in Cairo no, at some points never. of the day was crazy. No, ne- never. Because you're talking, man, you're talking about the difference between like 25 million people and just one million. Okay. So this is how the difference. And have you ever driven in Cairo? Like, have you ever driven on those roads? Sorry? Have you ever driven, like, in a traffic jam in Cairo? What? Have what? Have you ever, like, driven a car in a traffic jam yeah, in Cairo? No, no, no. No, for myself. How to me to drive in Cairo? Yes. It was, it was actually... It was like out of a movie. Like I don't know how anyone does it. Like our <laughs> our drivers were so impressive because they would just navigate need, through these like traffic jams. It was it was scary almost. Yeah, you need you need to be very clever and need you 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 blame need for speed to drive there. How how far is the drive from Luxor to Cairo? Like I know I think we flew, but how long would the drive be? Nine hours. Nine hours. So when you would go up as a kid or in your youth, would you fly or drive? I, I take a train, actually. I prefer a train. Okay. Very cool. And so, I, again, I don't know how long you have. I, I really appreciate you being on. I want you to sell to the listeners on why to go to Egypt. Because I tell all my friends to go, but I think they should hear it from the source. So oh, th- thank you, Matt. Thank you to let me to advert- get some advertising for my country. Uh, I would love to to tell you if you come to Egypt, you're going to see the the history, the ancient, the real ancient history. You're going to see some stuff uh, has like five thousand years old or four thousand five hundred year, years old. You're going to see is 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 a massive history. So you're talking. You you you're going to cover your tour from Cairo to Aswan, you're going to, have to cover more than uh, 2,000 or 3,000 years old. You're going to, have to start very early with 2,500 BC, and you're going to, have to do something in during the time of the Mid- New Kingdom with 1,500 BC, even the Greek-Roman time. You're going to, have to see that. Also, there is Christianity and the Muslim history is still there. So I want to tell you, you can tell, like the massive history, the most history, the most uh, history on the world that it's in, in Egypt. So you're going to see, if you would like to come to visit the history, you're going to see interesting about the history, the ancient uh, time you're going to visit. If you would like to see, to like entertainment for the beaches and the Red Sea, we have a Red Sea, we have a Mediterranean Sea, most of them are great, especially the Red Sea. If you want to snorkeling, if you want to diving, it's, it's a red sea, it's a great. Even if you would like to see the more like landscape or you're going to do camping at night in the, in the oasis, we have a beautiful desert, you can do that. So I would love to tell you, you have like a, a multi 
touring, multi inter interesting when you're going to visit Egypt. So you will never regret if you come to visit Egypt. So welcome anyone to visit us. Definitely. And I, I share all of Omar's sentiments there. He, uh, he did a great job of, of helping us get to see the country and, and helping us learn about the history of the country. So if you go, uh, try, try to get in contact with Omar too, but it, um, it's an amazing place. And I, I feel like I'm so blessed to have gotten to go. It allowed me to meet people like you and, and, and other people that are passionate about history, are passionate about religion, are passionate about, um, the way the world works, I feel like. And so, yeah, no, Egypt is an incredible place. And yeah, no, Omar, again, th thanks for coming on. I could talk for as long as you want to. I just want to make sure you know uh, you do not have any time obligation here. You can you can go whenever you need to. But I just wanted to say thank you, honestly, for, for coming on and talking with, with me and my listeners. You're welcome. My, my pleasure to talk, to talk to you guys. My pleasure. Yeah, and, and so, guy, like, I guess we can end it here. But Omar... um. I, I miss you, man. Like it's uh, I, I miss the cruise. We uh, we kind of we danced a little bit. We had a lot of fun. So it's um, it's weird that it's been two years. I can't believe it's been two years. But when I come back, Omar, you're gonna you're gonna get a, a call from me or something. Sure, sure, man. You're welcome anytime. Well, Omar, have a great rest of Ramadan with, with your family and and like in in our country, or I would say God bless you or Allah bless you. Like I I just I hope you you do well, and I I can't wait to uh to keep connecting and, and keep staying in touch on Facebook and, and those type of uh, mediums. Thank you, man. Thank you so much. Omar, see you. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome.